um, to our HDRI skylight and directional light. So we already have a directional light. Um, we already have a skylight. We can use our Barcelona HDRI map to light our scene. Okay, so it will be using data from this uh, texture to light up our room. So that is what uh, skylight uh, HDRI HDRI lighting is. Um, there are there are a few ways to really light um, our UE four project. Um, some like to use uh, this HDRI uh, lighting. For me personally, I, I tend to use directional light more because um, I will be using my skylight to light the exterior and it has to be movable. So um, by that definition, I can't really use the skylight to light up my interior. So usually what I will do is um, I will use the directional light to light up my bounce cut uh, uh, to light up my interior um, sometimes using bounce cut te technique um, if I have a chance I will show you how to do it uh, I believe uh, most of us will know how to do it um, used first by the famous Kula um, yeah so that's uh, directional light and skylight so I'll just leave it as it is um, maybe I'll just uh, add a bit of temperature to my directional light I want to have a kind of a evening kind of time so I'll change it to 3500 and um, let's build my light okay so now it's a bit um, is you can see that it is the warm effect is uh, has been built into the um, project uh, another thing to highlight is um, there are some gaps here so we have to make sure that um, we try to cover the gaps to prevent light leaks later so let me just shift it down a bit okay and then I will rebuild Right, so um, let's move on. Okay, before I move on um, to the next session, I just want to tidy up um, my project a little bit. Um, so first things first, when we have the export folder, usually what I'll do is once I have exported, uh, imported my mesh, I will always move it out so that my export folder is always empty. This will help me to organize my, my things better. And um, so I'm going to move this into HDRI. You know, just, just to keep things uh, more. More organized. Okay, so I'll, I'll delete this. Okay, let me delete it later. So, and this as well, I'm gonna move my, put all this into a folder. Okay, so to make it look clean and nice. Okay, let's move on. All right, the next part is to remove the gun from our FPS game mode um, yes we don't really want to have a gun showing around when we are doing our walkthrough so um, well I personally I like the FPS mode of the realistic rendering so it already doesn't it already doesn't have a gun and uh, so I would like to use the FPS model, first person shooter model of, of uh, this realistic rendering. So what I will do is I will go to the um, uh, realistic rendering project. 
get the FPS character blueprint and import over to my project. Okay, once that is done, I'm not going to do it because I've done it. So you go ahead and do it. But once that is done, um, I'm just going to go to blueprint, mm, game mode, edit first person game mode, pawn, edit FPS character, select pawn class. Uh, originally, I think it's, it's not FPS character, I have forgotten, but we will just point it to the one that we have migrated from the realistic rendering, which is FPS character. Okay, once that is done, voila, the gun is gone. Okay, um, the next portion of the class, I'm going to show you how to make the collision of the player smaller so that it can move around easier so the collision of the player is determined by this capsule so to make the collision smaller all we have to do is just to make the capsule thinner okay so as you can see right now this is my boundary right so I'm going to just reduce the size of this capsule okay and um, so basically what we have to do is we have to go to blueprints and FPS character. Remember now we are using the one that is without gun, yeah, the one that we have migrated from the realistic rendering demo. So we just double click on it, press viewport, highlight the capsule and reduce the radius. Okay, I'm just going to put 0.1 and compile. Once that is done, you realize that you have more room to walk now okay more space to walk so that's one way but i don't i don't really think it is very important um so let's just uh move on from this one okay and the last portion adding collisions to static mesh so apart instead of the bounding volumes let me just remove all the blocking volumes there's another way to add collision. So um, as you can see right now, I don't have collision, so I'll fall. But um, there's another way to add apart from the blocking volume is to go to the mesh itself. Double click on the mesh and uh, go to collision and add the box or whichever one you like. For the floor, the box would be good. So once that is done, you realize that the collision has been in place okay this uh this box already have a collision so when i press play i can move around and when i walk out of the boundaries of this box i will fall okay oh i have already fallen okay let me show you one more time huh? so let me just press play and as, as I walk out, I will fall. Okay, so the collision comes from the box and not the bounding volume that uh, previously that I, I put in place. Okay, so that's all I have for today. Do remember to subscribe if you have not subscribed to the video. And uh, feel free to give any comments uh, on what you would like to learn. Um, please give me some time as uh, I prepare the lessons and um, it does take a bit of time to do a good tutorial. So um, thank you for being patient and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you.